Good afternoon and welcome to the Voice of Rio Grande. Well, fall is in the air and um, as I was writing notes for today's program, I actually wrote spring is in the air because I think there's something about uh, the temperatures right now and the way the campus looks, it feels like spring. Um, but we're excited that it's fall and um, we are in the seventh week of classes. We're almost to the midpoint of the semester. That's an exciting time for everyone, um, but it's also a hectic time um, as students are preparing for midterms and we have many activities on campus and um, space in the library and study areas is of a premium. Um, but a lot of good things going on. Our soccer season, our volleyball season, cross country, all of those are in full swing. Um, and basketball is starting soon. We also, in our community, we have the 46th annual Bob Evans Farm Festival that will be starting this weekend. It's October the 14th through the 16th. So for our audience um, who is familiar with that, don't forget to come back this year. And if you have not been before, it's just a wonderful experience. Um, we also, during that farm festival, we have events on campus. Um, our women's soccer team plays on Saturday the 15th at 5 o'clock, and our reigning men's national championship soccer team uh, plays on um, Saturday at 7 o'clock p.m. And then following those games, uh, there's a really exciting evening planned. It's called Rockets Over Rio, and this fireworks show is absolutely unbelievable and uh, I invite you all to come um, it's it's just spectacular to see something like that anywhere much less in this area is um, is just um, so much fun and it will blow you away so please join us if you can and um, walk around our campus I think it's going to be a beautiful weekend at least the forecast shows that at this point point. and of course you're always welcome on our campus anytime so please please join us well many of our viewers and our listeners know um, about who we are, are really well versed in Rio Grande and um, how we are the only combined private university and public community college um, of our kind in the country. And we get a lot of well-deserved attention and notoriety because of this unique arrangement. Um, but um, because of this we have two boards, governing boards. We have a governing board that was established for the university and one that was established for the community college. And each year, at least once per year, these two boards come together for a retreat um, to have strategic discussions and work on development as boards. And that retreat will take place this year on October the 6th and 7th. And if you're watching this live, that's actually tomorrow and Friday, and we're really excited <coughs> about that. My guest today is a leader of one of our boards and I'm pleased to introduce Larry Kidd. He's the chair of our Rio Grande Community College Board. Larry, thank you for, for joining us today. Michelle, thank you for inviting me. I'm excited about being here. Good, good. Well, Larry, I really want you to introduce yourself, um, but you have so many hats that you wear and wear them so well, and I would not do probably any one of them justice, but let me see if I can lay a little bit of a foundation and sure. then we'll let you run with it. Um, you are the CEO of Reliable Staffing Services and it's an independently owned um, staffing organization and you're really positioned well to meet the needs of em employers nationwide. Um, and why don't, why don't we start there and then we'll move, as we have time, we'll move to some of the other areas, but maybe you could share some details about that company, how it came to be, and where your passions are with, with that work. Absolutely. Well, we formed Reliable Staffing Services in 2006 out of a need to help fulfill another business we had, which was Amer uh, American Warehousing Logistics in a, a production company that I also owned. And <clears throat> like many of the other employers, we were using temporary services and as a matter of fact we had over a hundred a day mm. um, in both of our facilities and we would order 10 people and only two of them would show up so i would go back and challenge our folks and say i think we can do a better job than this mm -hmm. and we formed our own staffing firm so because of our knowledge and our experience in the staffing industry because we were users of it uh, we were able to pick up some pretty nice accounts quickly mm -hmm. and continue to grow the business and over a period of time 
we ended up selling the other entities and just focused on staffing. And today we are in uh, Columbus and Jackson and Chilcothy. Mm -hmm. Twice we were awarded one of the fastest staffing companies in the United States wow. on a two-year or four-year um, average basis. Hmm. So we're pretty excited where we are and we want to continue to grow and, and make our mark. Yeah, that's really neat. You know, and when I, th I hear you talk about that, um, I think about other things that you've done and your work on our community college board and the leadership there. It's, um, I think it's a theme with you. It's, you see a need and then you are looking for a way to address it. And I think that's kind of the moral of that story with your company and how it came to be. I think that's really exciting. Well, thank you. Well, what, what is next <coughs> for, for that company? What do you see happening? Well, we recently opened our Columbus office. We've um, recently picked up some, some pretty good size accounts. And in one case, we have an order for up to 2,400 people, which mm. is pretty significant. And yes. while we won't be able to fill the, all those orders, we're gonna do the best we can to fill as many as possible. Good. And this is a tough labor market. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's truly an employee's labor market at this time. And uh, basically anybody that wants to work, they either are working or they can work. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, just like the housing market changes back and forth, so does the employment market. Uh, we've also has have the issue of trying to find people that not only want to work but can stay off the drugs, mm -hmm. which is also a big problem in in our industry. We do mostly light industrial work, mm -hmm. uh, given where we started in southeastern Ohio. Most of it was factory work, and we do do some clerical and medical work. But um, uh, in the light industrial, you'll see more of those type of issues and people will change for a small amount of money and right. so we're ever recruiting and changing and finding new people. Are you seeing, you mentioned the drug testing mm -hmm. and or just drugs in the in the workplace and with in, in potential employees, have you seen that change a great deal in terms of uh, the testing requirements or just the environment itself? We do in-house testing. Mm. Uh, we'll do a, a 10 panel test in our offices and I testified in DC probably two or three years ago about the drug problem and the unemployment problem. And at that time, we were testing about 25% of the people that were coming in were testing positive. Mm. I think now it's even worse. Mm. It's, um, and unfortunately in Southeastern Ohio, and Ohio in general, mm -hmm. the opiates are the, a part of the bigger problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the marijuana issue, of course, we, um, the legislature recently passed the medical marijuana. They're trying to figure out how that's gonna work and what it's gonna look like. Mm -hmm. But clearly the opiates are, are one of the bigger problems. And not so long ago, I identified it as a major issue and formed a drug task force in Jackson County. Mm -hmm. Actually, and ended up being more regional. And um, we were fortunate that we got a lot of attention because it was a big problem and the state got involved and helped us you know, take that to another level. Mm -hmm. We were focusing mostly on uh, getting rid of the prescription pill problem. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I work with Holzer, I'm on the Holzer board, Holzer Health System board, and work with the hospital and we were able to make some changes to help with the prescription part. But one thing we did identify, Michelle, <clears throat> is if we could get the people off the pills, more than likely they would end up going to heroin. But mm -hmm. that was something that law enforcement could address because it's, heroin's illegal no matter how you slice it. Right. Prescription medication ne isn't necessarily that, that way. Right, so. wow. Well, the issues run pretty deep. They and, do. Um, we need we need some solutions, and I think you know it, it makes me think of some of the other things that you've done because I know your community and your civic service work has been extensive, and you've worked a lot in economic development directly and indirectly right. with things that you've done. Um, and it's really impressive, but you know it makes me think about um, your work with Jobs Ohio. And I think those things kind of in, I, I assume that that's a topic that comes up a lot with it does. you know in that work. In fact, not only are we addressing it at Jobs Ohio, we're also addressing it at other boards that I serve, mm -hmm. uh, which include Holzer and the Ohio Chamber of Commerce and other mm -hmm. issues, because truly it's a, it's a problem all across the board. And while <clears throat> you know, the governor has said many times that um, probably the biggest issue of families is, is lack of jobs, I think perhaps it starts with the drug problem mm -hmm. because they can't get a job without being clean. And um, we have looked at, at that at not only Jobs Ohio but other boards. And you're right about the economic development. That has always been a passion of mine. I started 
probably in 2004 or 5 <clears throat> as the chairman of the Jackson County Economic Development mm -hmm. got involved because I believe putting people to work does make a difference in people's lives. Um, that's why I'm partially in this business is, you mm -hmm. know, the people business is helping people to get work. Mm -hmm. And from there I got involved in, into some quasi-politics um, because of the staffing firm and we saw some issues with um, some of the government agencies and mm -hmm. we we thought, well, there's something that we can do that changes. So I got behind uh, some people that were in, involved in the decision making and influencers in the, mm -hmm. the politics. And um, later, the governor appointed me to Jobs Ohio, and mm -hmm. I was one of the first nine board members. And um, I think we've done a lot of good things for the state. And um, we're always, you know, signing new contracts with new companies and bringing new employment mm -hmm. back. And I remember not so long ago, the governor was so excited that we, you know, brought some automotive manufacturing businesses back. And mm -hmm. who would have thought in the rest spell that you'd be bringing it back to Ohio rather than having them leave? And right. So we've made some very positive um, moves, and we have some exciting board members. And uh, for those that don't know, Jobs Ohio is a quasi-public economic development arm that was formed in 2010 or 2011. And uh, when I first joined, we had more board members than we did employees. <laughs> and that's certainly changed today. Yeah, but yeah. We're excited about it. That's really good. A lot of good progress. And it, it just seems like that we're hearing about um, the, the work of Jobs Ohio just everywhere around the state. And as we think about this region, um, there's, <coughs> there's important work to be done. And what I've seen is a lot of agencies working together mm -hmm. in ways that um, just are really positive because those partnerships among these agencies and groups really makes a difference, um, especially I've seen in this region of the of the state. Um, you are also let's I mean my goodness I don't know what you do in your spare the, the spare time that you don't have, um, but you're also the chair elect and the director of the Ohio Chamber of Commerce and you right. mentioned that a little bit a few minutes ago, but can you tell us how you got involved in that and maybe go into a couple of the issues that are in the heart and minds of the, sure. of the chamber. I got involved in the Ohio Chamber as a result of some of the government issues that mm -hmm. I had mentioned earlier with uh, my staffing firm. Um, and in fact, I'll just go into it briefly. In 2006 or seven, uh, shortly after forming my staffing company, I had a client that had one of my employees there and they, one of the employees on second shift had his 500 pound mold fall from a crane and hit him mm. and scrape the front of him. Mm -hmm. And the client, as he should have, called uh, the EMS and the EMS came in and looked at the individual and they decided to life flight him to Columbus. Mm -hmm. And um, the good news is shortly after being seen, the employee was released to light duty. Well, being in, new in business and ignorant to the way things worked, I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And um, as an employer, you should be proactive in accidents. And um, I could have tried to dispute the claim because it was the, the um, worker was released quickly, but I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And um, my rates end up going up by 1,600% over the next three years wow. from about 12000 to $200,000. Wow. So it was at that time I approached John Kerry and I said, is there anything we can do? I talked to the administrator of workers' comp, I talked to the business office, the chief legal counsel, and they all said, no, there's just the way it works. And the way workers' comp works, and it's better now than it had been, um, you, your rates are based on your payroll, mm -hmm. and you're stuck with the rates for four years, that's how long a, a mm. claim stays on. So, and you had to be in the state system if you were a new company, well, we were in business six months. We were based on a four-year average. We didn't have four years. Right. So we got zeros. Oh. And uh, we were growing incredibly, so we got some pretty large rates. So he suggested, John Kerry actually, mm -hmm. he's now the, mm -hmm. the chancellor. Mm -hmm. He was our state rep, and he said, why don't you take a look at the Ohio Chamber? I think you'll find them as an advocacy group to be very exciting, and mm -hmm. I think they might be able to help you. So I contacted him and got involved and got on the workers' comp committee, of course. And, mm -hmm and then the legislative committee and it all kind of grew from there. Mm -hmm. So do you think that from that, I mean, your lesson learned from that, that there are um, efforts going on with the chamber to help em employers understand some of those dynamics better and 
kind of be prepared for that kind of thing or understand what's in store? Absolutely. One thing that the Chamber does, and we're fortunate because we have an executive director that's been there for 17, 25, mm -hmm. 30 years, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. and he knows everybody, and he knows the system, mm -hmm. and generally if there's policy coming out, including from the governor's office, they'll call them first and say, mm -hmm. what do your members think of this? Mm -hmm. And kind of get, not necessarily that they go that route, but right. they'll just kind of, you know, feel the waters to see where it stands. So the Ohio Chamber has a lot of influence with, mm. in fact, at one time the governor, when he was elected in 2010, um, the endorsement of the Ohio Chamber, he says, would really put him over the edge. Mm. It was the first time in the 117 year history that the chamber endorsed a governor. Hmm. And we, now, we oh, endorse wow. various representatives and judges and yeah. issues, but never a governor. So it does have a lot of influence. Um, it does give you the opportunity to get involved, mm -hmm. um, whether it be just speaking to the chamber and having them communicate or getting access to legislators and judges and the governor's office where you otherwise wouldn't. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Some of the issues that are out there are again the opiate issue and the employment issue, the America, medical marijuana. Marijuana was a big issue last year and um, you know as employers we felt that there needed to be a lot of um, revision on the recreational marijuana. Mm -hmm. So um, they're, they're pretty active. Mm -hmm. Well I know as the um association, the Ohio Association of Community Colleges, mm -hmm. some of the issues that we've looked at um, as a group for all of our community colleges in the state um, as it relates to workforce and training dollars and the state budget, we've turned to the chamber mm -hmm. um, a number of times to say, you know, what do you think about this? How do you feel about this issue? And it's been a, I think it's been a really strong communication and a, and a support okay. for a lot of the things that are important for workforce and for, for training individuals and increasing the credentials and the graduation rates and the education in the state. So I think it's good really all the way around. Well, I want to turn our attention with the time that we have left to the University of Rio Grande and Rio Grande Community College. Absolutely. And um, gosh, your family has been associated with Rio for, for years and your father, Jack, was such a dedicated and loyal member of the university board and a leader on that board for so long. and. Um, we have a building on this campus for those people who don't know. Um, there is a building here. It's the Kid Math and Science Center um, that, that bears the name of your family. And I think that that's a real mark and a testament to the commitment and um, you know, the, the time and energy and resources that, um, that your family um, many times over have contributed. Um, so you know, I, I think that that force that the Kid family has been for Rio um, has just shown itself so many times over and then with your leadership on the community college board now it just continues so what has what has driven that as you talk to your dad and you guys kind of compare notes and things like that what has driven this this connection to Rio for you well I think part of the reason that dad got involved with Rio is uh, some of the same reasons that I got involved in in the various economic development he uh, uh, was a um, president and CEO of Oak Hill Financial and Oak Hill Banks and they too had issues with employment mm -hmm. and I think he saw the opportunity at Rio Grande as in fact he I remember him coming home on many occasions saying it's the best kept secret at southeastern Ohio he was so excited about uh, the non-traditional students that mm -hmm. could you know take courses and graduate and how proud they were of what they've done um, they were probably little or no other opportunities for them to do something like that mm -hmm. to get an education and he truly believed that um, the path to success was through education mm -hmm. and um, both he and mom believe that and through the foundation that that they formed they've always put a high emphasis on education mm -hmm. not only locally but you know community wide and regionally wide and um, he's so proud of Rio Grande and what's it's, what it does and what it stands for and what it can do and the potential growing. In fact, they've since retired and as you know they were down mm -hmm. and had a visit about a month ago and mm -hmm. he came back just raving about how excited he was and probably lucky he's not here anymore because he'd be <laughs> down at campus all the time. All the time. We'd love to have him. I don't think he can see this broadcast right now. He may be listening it on, to uh, Blog Talk Radio. He, he, might, be. he, he may be. He might be. Um, but he may not be seeing the, um, the video broadcast. But um, 
yesterday um, we really celebrated that visit that he had to campus. Um, we were able to gather some of the people that he met with, the faculty and the staff mm -hmm. and the students, um, to talk about kind of the, the results of that visit and the support from the foundation for the things that are going on in that in that building and in those programs. Excellent. And so we'll be g communicating with all of you in the foundation about kind of how that went and Good. I think some exciting things to come from that. Um, but no, I think that um, you know as we as we think about um, what you're saying, the education of this region and preparing our students to be employable and to be good citizens in this area. We have a lot of students that come from this area in our four county region that is the service region for the community college. Um, and they they come to school here and they stay here. Mm -hmm. And they have families here and you know they have their careers here. We also have um, students from 66 counties in the in the state of Ohio and we have it's easy for me to remember as a as a former musician I'm mean, a pianist there are 88 keys on a piano there are 88 keys in uh, counties in this state <laughs> I'll never forget that I'm so thankful for that connection but we have 66 of those counties that are represented on our campus and um, beyond that we have um, 24 states and wow. we have um, 20 countries so when you look at the impact here but also the wave of effect that we have. Some of those people come from far and wide and then they decide to stay in these communities as well. So it's really just, I think all of that makes this very special and, and unique and very valuable to the area, um, just from all those vantage points. We're not a, you know, kind of monochromatic kind of institution. We have so many colors and uh, our mission is, is, is wide and it's diverse. Um, but I think that it's one that um, serves this area in a way that I don't think any other kind of mission could. I agree with you. And I have to give you credit. You know, you've been a president for two and a half, three years. Two years two now. Years. Yeah, it's two Congrats. years last week. Yeah, my anniversary. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. But you've been able to um, find a niche that we otherwise didn't recognize. And I think that um, with the shrinking population of the community college and in the state college, right? Um, and the and not it's not only in Ohio; it's no, nationwide. It but is. you know, you've been able to to find that special niche that we can bring people in. We have high hopes to continue that. And you right. know, they, it's exciting about some of the other programs you're working on with you know China and, right. and other areas. And um, you know, I, I think you're going to take this to a different level. Well, so. we, we plan to, and it's with the governing boards working with us, it's our staff, it's the community partners. Um, those things really, I think, are going to be the key to our success. But I think about what you were saying as far as your father coming home, oh, it's the best kept secret. And that's one of the things that we've really been dedicated over the last two years, and I think that that preceded me coming on board, but we've really tried to heighten that. Of, we don't, that's, that's not a good thing for us to be a kept, best kept secret, right? We want that secret to get out and we want people to know about what we have to offer and, um, and I think that it's happening. It's just, um, it takes some time for those, those things to, to really uh, build momentum. Um, well, as I know we don't have a ton of time left and so maybe we start talking about this and it gives us an opportunity to have another show down the road. Sure. Um, but <clears throat> what, you know, as board chair, maybe you can talk a little bit about what your focus has been and what you've seen as some of the successes and um, share that with us as you've seen from that seat as a board chair. Absolutely. Well, I'm very excited to be the board chair of the community college. It's a, while it's unique, my father was the chair of the, the university at one time, and it's a different perspective because we're a public board and mm -hmm. um, it's unique because you actually have two bosses that you report to and, mm -hmm. you know, we try to balance it all and, and try to maximize what each of us can use. And that's what we try to do is look and see what can we do that the university board can't do mm -hmm. and what can the university board do that we can't do so we're always looking at ways that we can improve both both entities but specifically two things that i'm excited about are, are the new opportunities that we have in both jackson and macarthur mm -hmm. um, we're looking to and soon we'll be signing a contract on a uh, new building in jackson uh, it, it's a very nice building and will um, allow us to grow in that market. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at, at some other things in MacArthur and uh, those things will be coming down the line you know, fairly soon and fairly quickly. 
Um, I'm also excited about the dean of the community college. Mm -hmm. I think you know, that person's going to bring a new light to what we do. It'll help us build programs and identify programs that maybe we should have that we do currently don't have. Right. Uh, so those would be probably two of the bigger things that that we, are my focus mm -hmm. and figuring out, you know, what can we do as a community college to help um, expand our, our two entities, the university and community college. I think those are good. And if we can achieve those and make great strides in those areas, I think we've I think we've really made a mark that will last for the institution long after, you know, we're we are gone. I agree. Um, I you know I think about um, what you were saying about um, the the facilities and and the, the opportunity to expand. You know, I think that our mission as a, a community college is related to accessibility and making sure that we're available to students um, where they are. And um, that's important to us. And um, so I think that, you know, the, those facilities, growth in those areas are naturals and they're what we're supposed to do. It's what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm really excited that we're working together on those things. The dean position that you mentioned is really exciting too because as we started this conversation talking about staffing and employment, um, we have great employees here. I mean, we couldn't do anything that we do without the great staff that we have here and the faculty. Um, but um, we never seem to have enough of them. And um, we try to do a lot with um, maybe sometimes less than, than we'd like to have. And so when we have an opportunity to add a position like this to do some strategic um, operations and growth for the institution, I think it's, it's great. It's great. Uh, there's so much more we could talk about. We're going to run out of time, but thank you for coming. Well, thank and you for having me. Yeah, yeah. I it's look forward to seeing where all of these things go. And the next time we visit on air, um, there'll be another thing. It won't be Jobs Ohio and Ohio Chamber and URG, RGCC. It'll be something else on the Larry Kidd list. So um, we'll look forward to, to looking at those things. Um, I'll close today just to remind you that we have a lot of great shows in the coming week weeks. Um, Expositions is a show that focuses on arts and culture and Valerie Thomas and Mike Thompson lead that show. Um, Voice of Rio Grande, we have Dr. Sachs as the host. He's our provost here, Richard Sachs, and he had three Welsh students that were here visiting, I think, on one of his recent shows. And our deans, Donna Mitchell and Heather, Heather Duda, also have had some great shows. Um, we have a show called Positive Learning, and that's not my southern accent coming into play there. It actually is P-A-W at the beginning of that, Positive Learning. It's a dog show. Tech Talk um, is really exciting about new technologies. And then OVB is sponsoring a program called Common Sense. So there's just always so much to learn and so much exciting to watch. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.